If you're watching this video, that means you have been summoned for jury duty. For some, the first reaction to seeing that summons is how inconvenient it will be to serve as a juror. After all, jury duty conflicts with everyday obligations we have at work and home. It interrupts the flow of our lives. Hold that thought for a moment and step back from the process temporarily so that we can appreciate how lucky we are to be able to think of jury service in that light. For centuries all throughout the world, people have fought for one of the most fundamental rights known to all of us, the right to be judged by a jury of one's peers, not by tyrants or dictators or professional jurists, but by our fellow citizens, by members of our community. Even today, people in foreign lands strive for that basic element of any system of justice. We are fortunate to be able to take for granted the privilege enshrined in our federal and state constitutions, both of which guarantee the right to trial by jury. Along with that right and privilege comes responsibility. So when friends have asked me from time to time how they might get out of jury duty, my answer is always the same. We are lucky to live in a society that asks us to perform this basic duty of citizenship, and we must all serve when called, or the system we value will not work. Thank you for appearing today as a potential juror. I hope that your service will be meaningful and rewarding. While it may be inconvenient in some respects, you have every right to be proud of your contribution to the cause of justice. Many things have changed about America since the Constitution was signed, but our basic trial process is essentially the same now as it has been for more than two centuries. Today, as always, you, the juror, are the mainstay of American justice. We depend on your sense of fairness, your attention to duty and detail, your human experience. You and a million other Americans will judge more than 120,000 cases this year, and although each one is different, there are certain people and procedures that are the same for every trial. We're gonna show you step by step what you can expect. As a juror, you may be selected for a civil trial or for a criminal trial. A civil trial is among parties who have a dispute and need the court system to resolve it. A criminal trial deals with charges that a crime has been committed. In both cases, the one who initiates the case is called the plaintiff. The one who responds to the plaintiff's case is the defendant, and both sides are usually represented by attorneys. Depending on the type of case, the way we refer to the attorney for the plaintiff varies. In a civil trial, it's easy. We simply say, the plaintiff's attorney. In a criminal trial, the state of New Jersey is actually the plaintiff. In this case, we call the attorney for the plaintiff the prosecutor. Your first encounter with the courtroom will be during the jury selection process. Roger Casella, please take seat number seven in the upper row. Megan Baxter, seat number eight, top row next to the last juror. This is called voir dire, which is French for speak the truth. The person responsible for swearing in the jury and witnesses as well as marking exhibits is the court clerk. If sound recording equipment is being used to make the trial record, the clerk may also handle that equipment, or it may be sound recorded by a special operator or video recorded. When a trial is not being recorded by sound or video, you'll see a court reporter keeping the record. You may also see a sheriff's officer who maintains security and enforces decorum in the courtroom, and a court aide who is responsible for assisting with the proceedings. Ladies and gentlemen, as I mentioned in the beginning, I'll be asking you a series of questions. Please think carefully about your answers before you give them. And those of you still seated in the gallery, please also carefully consider how you would answer them. You may be directed to replace a seated juror who may have been excused. It's important to always keep in mind that the court and the parties in this case have a right to select what they believe to be an impartial jury. The judge questions the jurors during the voir dire to see if there's any reason why a particular juror may not be impartial. During the actual trial, the judge conducts the proceedings, ruling on questions of evidence and instructing the jury on the law. Ms. Laura Gallagher, who's seated at the table nearest you, has sued the defendant, Mr. Benjamin Edwards, 
claiming injuries arising from an accident on September 10th of last year at the corner of Oak and Main Streets in Mapleton. Both the plaintiff, Ms. Laura Gallagher, and the defendant, Mr. Edwards, are being represented by attorneys who will introduce themselves to you in a moment. The purpose of what we're doing now is to choose a jury. So let's begin. This voir dire is for a civil trial. The judge is explaining the case to the prospective jurors. Jurors may be given a printed list of the questions that will be asked during jury selection in this trial. The jurors will also be informed of the names of parties, attorneys, and witnesses who are involved in the trial. If it were a criminal case, the judge would explain the charges against the defendant. Do any of you know the defendant in this case? If so, please raise your hand. The record will show no affirmative response. The voir dire relies on one very important factor, that each juror will give honest and complete answers. The persons whose names are shown on the witness list will be called to testify in this trial. Witnesses are Jody Thompson, Kareem Assad, Officer John Carter, Dr. Victoria Ryan, and Michelle Sudikoff. Do you think you know any of these people? Ms. Rivera. I work at Mercy Hospital and Dr. Ryan is on staff there. Do you work with her? We haven't actually worked together, but I've certainly heard a lot about her. Your Honor, I move to have Ms. Rivera excused for cause due to her previous relationship with Dr. Ryan. The defense attorney is asking the judge to dismiss this particular juror because she knows one of the witnesses in this case. When it appears a juror may not be completely impartial, either side's attorney can move for dismissal. This is called dismissal for cause. Ms. Rivera, you may be excused. Please call another juror. Andrew Willis, please take seat number three. The attorneys are also allowed to have a juror dismiss without giving a reason. This is called a peremptory challenge. Both sides are allowed only a limited number of peremptory challenges. If you're excused for cause or on a peremptory, don't be offended. This is just the system working the way it was intended to. Please rise. Raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that you will try the matter in dispute the number of jurors needed depends on whether it's a civil or criminal case, so don't be surprised to see empty seats in the jury box. In either case, the court often seats more jurors than needed so that there will be a sufficient number of jurors in the event that a juror is unable to finish the trial. It may be necessary for the trial judge to randomly designate alternate jurors prior to deliberations. And give a true verdict according to the evidence. We do. Please be seated. With the jury selected, the trial is ready to begin. In both civil and criminal trials, you will hear testimony from the people who have knowledge of the facts in the case, the witnesses. But first, you'll hear from both sides' attorneys. Thank you, Your Honor. This case is about an accident caused by the defendant, an accident that was no fault of the plaintiff. This is called the opening statement. The side bringing the suit or making the charges goes first. The defendant's attorney then gets an opportunity to outline their case. As is always the situation, there are two sides to every story. This case is no exception. From the evidence the defense- It's important to keep in mind that the opening statement is not evidence in itself. Rather, it is simply an overview of the case that the attorneys will be presenting. Some items of evidence are physical exhibits. These are introduced and explained by the party who is offering them. Then they are labeled by the clerk. You'll probably be invited to examine them during the trial. But most of the evidence will be in the form of testimony from witnesses. Both sides are allowed to call witnesses and to question the opposition's witnesses. Ms. Thompson, do you own a cafe at the corner of Oak and Main Streets? Yes, sir. Have you had the opportunity to observe the traffic pattern at that intersection at or around 1.30 in the afternoon on a weekday? Yes, sir, all the time. That's the time I'm usually coming back from my walk after lunch. It's a messy intersection, isn't it? With people constantly trying to beat the light? Objection, Your Honor. Leading the witness. Please approach the bench. 
Now that's something you may see a lot of. The attorney on one side may ask or state something that the other attorney thinks is unfair. So you'll hear objection, and the judge may often call the attorneys up to explain themselves in private rather than letting a disagreement affect the jury. Depending on what the judge decides, you might hear the rest of that testimony because the objection was overruled, or you might hear something like this. Objection sustained. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, please disregard the characterization of the intersection in the previous question. Counselor, you may continue. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Thompson, in your own words, could you describe the amount of traffic at that time of day? Not only should you listen carefully to what each witness is saying, you should watch carefully as well. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I will. Take the stand, please. Mannerisms and expressions might tell you how confident the witness is about what he or she is saying. Dr. Ryan, I direct your attention to what has been marked for identification as Plaintiff's Exhibit 5. Do you recognize it? Yes. That's a larger version of a drawing I did for the police right after the accident. And does Plaintiff's Exhibit 5 accurately depict the location of the two cars in the intersection at the time you observed them? Yes. The blue rectangle shows where the blue car was, and the red rectangle shows the location of the red car. Your Honor, Plaintiff moves Exhibit 5 into evidence. Any objection? No objection, Your Honor. Exhibit 5 in evidence. Nothing further of this witness, Your Honor. We've all watched TV courtroom dramas. The real thing isn't always so sensational, but it's always important. And not only do you need to pay close attention to what goes on inside the courtroom, you need to be careful about what happens when you're outside the courtroom as well. We will recess for lunch and resume in one hour. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, as you can understand, this matter is important to all parties and each is entitled to your fair and full consideration. Please refrain from discussing the case with anyone, even fellow jurors. There will be ample time to talk over the issues at the appropriate time, I assure you. I'll see you after lunch. When the court recesses, whether for lunch or until the next day, the judge will remind you not to discuss the case with anyone else. This includes family, friends, even fellow jurors. You should particularly avoid talking with or even overhearing anyone involved in the case. While in the courthouse, wear your juror badge. This will warn people not to discuss the case near you. If you believe someone has purposely tried to talk to you about the case, you must bring it to the court's attention immediately. Despite what you may have seen in the movies, it is not the juror's role to investigate the case. That means you should not visit the scene of the crime or an accident, not attempt to talk to witnesses on your own, or pay attention to media accounts regarding the trial. All rise. Be seated. You may call your next witness. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to call Kareem Assad to the stand. The attorneys in the case will present their entire case to you. Only what you hear and see in the courtroom is what you should use in your deliberations. After all the evidence has been presented, the attorneys give their closing statements. And I'm sure you'll find that my client did not cause this accident and that the plaintiff's claims have no merit. Thank you. Like the opening statements, the closing statements are not themselves evidence. They are each attorney's summation of the case as he or she has presented it. What we have seen and heard demonstrates quite clearly that this accident occurred because of and could have been prevented by the defendant. His actions and inactions have caused damage to my client's property and her person, as the evidence has shown. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you have now heard all the evidence in the case, and it's my job to give you the law that you must apply to the facts as you find them. Remember, you are the judges of the facts, but I am the judge of the law. Even if you disagree with some of the legal principles which I'm going to tell you, you must apply the law as I give it to you to the facts as you will find them. 
After closing arguments, the judge will give you careful and detailed instructions about how the law applies to the case you are considering and precisely what you will have to decide. You will then be escorted to the deliberation room to discuss your case in full confidentiality. Any alternate jurors will not participate in the deliberations. Once the required number of jurors agrees on a verdict, you will be escorted back to the courtroom to announce your decision. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a verdict? Yes, Your Honor, we have. We find in favor of... It's going on just like this in courtrooms all around the country, as it has for more than 200 years. Being called for jury duty may be inconvenient at times. The legal process may seem a bit slow, but our system of justice is the finest and fairest in the world because of you, the juror.